Hello everyone, in this video we are going to take you through uh, setting up a program that will store data related to a person's heart rate and that will calculate a person's average heart rate. Uh, so that when the program is complete, uh, the following will be displayed on the screen. So I'll click the green flag here and you see that the cat says the average heart rate is 75.5 and it calculates that using these, these 10 readings right here, these 10 heart rate readings and it calculates, first of all, it sums up all of the heart rate values and then calculates the average. So we're going to start with a blank screen here, a blank scratch screen, and we're going to drag out some of our code. But before we do that, we have to set up all of the uh, data storage parts of our program. So the first thing we have to set up is a list, which is going to hold our heart rate values. So we click variables, and down here we have this button that says make a list. We click on that, and we're going to give our list a name. We're going to call it heart rate. We click OK, and then you notice on this side of the screen, we now have our list. Now there's no entries in it. But to add entries, we just click this plus symbol, and then we can add the values for our heart rates. I'm going to add 76, 75, 76, 81, 83, 79, 76, 73, 70, 70, and 72. So there I have my list. I can expand it a little bit. And what I'm doing here is I'm entering in the values of my heart rate, let's say over the last 10 days. So let's say I took my heart rate at the same time every day for the last 10 days. And then what I'd like to do is write a program that will calculate the average. Now we need a few other things to store some of the data. So it's not just our heart rates that we need to store. We also need to store um, the sum of the heart rates. We also have to store which heart rate reading we're actually looking at. And then we also have to store the average heart rate. And so I can do that by making a variable. So I'm going to make a variable, and a variable is like a storage box in your program. So it has a name, and the variable can store one thing, and anytime you need to refer to the thing that's stored in the variable, you just use the name of the variable. So I'm going to click this button right here to make our first variable. Click make a variable. And then I'm going to give these variables different names. So the first one, first variable I'm going to call sum of heart rate, because we're going to have to have uh, a storage box to store that once we add up all of the heart rates we have to store those in a variable so that's our first one we're going to make another variable this one is called the average heart rate and then we need one more variable this one's going to be called heart rate readings and this one's going to store which heart rate we're looking at so for example when we start to add them up we're going to want to add up the first and the second and then we're going to add up the third and the fourth and the fifth totaling them all up all the way through the list so we need a variable to, to, to kind of scroll through the list for us. And you'll see how that works as we, as we keep writing the program. So now that we've set up our variables, we can code the program. And we're going to use a specific algorithm to find the average. And that algorithm, algorithm is we're going to add up all of the heart rate values. And then we're going to divide the sum of the heart rate values by the number of readings. So we can code this algorithm by first using a loop to add up all of the heart rate entries. So we're going to drag out the appropriate blocks. We'll start with, of course, when the green flag is clicked. So this will set up. Uh, this is usually the, the uh, most common way to start our program. And then what we're going to do first is we're going to set up all of our variables, or we're going to initialize the variables. So initializing variables means giving variables their initial or starting values at the very beginning of the program. So the values inside the variables might change when the programs run. But at the start, they often have to be a very specific value. So we're going to set all of those like this. Now you see these all say set average heart rate. So I'll just change these. This one's going to be sum of heart rate, average heart rate, and heart rate readings. So I've initialized all my variables so that they're all going to be set at zero when the program runs. Uh, now my next step is to start a loop. So I have 10 values, 10 heart rate values. So I'm going to want to use a loop. That will, that will step through all of those heart rate values and add them all up. So I'm going to jump back to my variables here, and I'm going to pull out two lines of code, not the set one. I'm going to pull out change, change, and I'm going to explain how these work uh, in just one minute here. I'm going to change sum of heart rate. All right, so let's slow down for a second here and just see what I've done. So we've set up, we've initialized our variables. Sum of heart rate's gonna equal zero, average heart rate's going to equal zero, 
heart rate reading is going to equal zero. We're going to start our loop. It's going to happen 10 times. We're going to change heart rate readings by one. So heart rate readings was zero, but now it's one. So we're going to look at this first number, 75. And then we're going to change sum of heart rate by the item at that spot one of heart rate. So we're going to take this number 75 and we're going to add it to sum of heart rate. Then we'll loop back again and we'll take heart rate readings. We'll change by one. So now we'll be looking at the heart rate number two and we'll add that to the sum of the heart rate. And then we'll jump through the loop again. We'll look at the heart rate readings number three and we'll add that to sum of heart rate. Then heart rate readings number four, add that. Add number five, add number six, add number seven, add number eight, add number nine, add number 10. And so you'll get the sum of the heart rates. Those sum of heart rates will be stored in this variable called sum of heart rate. And it will also be up here. You can see that I've ran this once and you see sum of heart rate equals 755. That's because this program has run through and it's summed up all of the, uh, all of the heart rates and it equal to 75. There we go. So there's 10 heart rate readings and the sum of the heart rate readings is 755. So we've really been efficient here by using this loop so that we can add up all of the heart rates really, really quickly. What we need to do next is to actually figure out the average. So right now we need them, to, we have them all totaled up, but that doesn't tell us too much. And so we have to calculate the average. So I'm gonna pull out this block here, set average heart rate. And we're gonna do a little calculation here. So under operators, I'll drag that one out. And then I jump back to my variables. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the sum of the heart rate and we're going to divide that by the number of heart rate readings that we're at. So we know we added up 10. So we're going to take the sum of the heart rate, which was 755, and we're going to divide that by heart rate readings. Now we need a way to kind of say this to the user or the person using our computer program. And so we will drag out this join block. We don't want to say apple, but I'll switch that in just one minute. We also want to add one of our variable values. So I'll show you how this works. So we will say to the user, average heart rate is, so it's going to say to the user, average heart, oops, average heart rate is, and then it will output the value that we calculated right here, average heart rate. And it's going to show that, I'm going to want to show that for 10 seconds. So again, we've initialized all our variables up here. We've all set them all to zero. Uh, we've then gone through our list called heart rate and we've added up all of the heart rates. We've stored that in sum of heart rate. And then in order to calculate the average heart rate, we'll take the sum of the heart rate and divide it by the heart rate readings and output that. And I'll just drag my cat down a little bit. When we run this, it says our average heart rate is 75.5. Now you notice there's uh, not a space between the colon and the 75. That's really easy to fix. We can just add the space in this line down here. Press the space bar. And there we go. Average heart rate is 75.5. Now that video has gone quite quickly, um, but you can take a look at the final code, or even better, you can step through the process and just keep kind of pressing the pause button. Um, there's also a resource available that will take you through step by step, uh, but it doesn't end here. So we can very easily alter this program so that it doesn't work with the average heart rate, but instead we could add other values in here. So for example, we could add um, information or data from sports, like the points or goals per game that someone has scored, and then we could calculate the average. Or it could be from art, like the price of recent paintings that have sold at an auction. Uh, or even the weather, we could take the daily high from the last few days, and then we could type that into our list and we could find out the average highest temperature for the last 10 days. Uh, what we can also do, is we can change uh, how many values we have in here. So for example, I could change heart rate. I could add a few other values for heart rate. I'll add five more. So now we have 15. And the only change I need to make to my program is I need to change this number right here, how many times it goes through the loop. And if I run this program now, it calculates the new average looking at all 15 of those values. And so that's how valuable programming can be. The way we've used these variables and the way we've written our code is we could have a thousand entries for heart rate and this code would stay exactly the same. We would just change this value right here. Once the, once the different heart rates are in, we have a thousand values in our list. We would just change the number of times it loops through. So it's very efficient code. It uses a sequence of instructions 
It uses loops. Um, it uses all sorts of the, uh, the concepts that we learn in computer programming uh, and coding. But then we get to use our mathematics to find out the average of some of our data.